Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. In this video I want to show you a feature in Mediator that virtually nobody is using but you should definitely use it because it is one of the most useful features that you will find in this library. But before we dive into code I would like to tell you that if you want to get access to my source code you need to join this channel as a member with an ambassador level and all ambassador members of the channel get access to the source code a few hours after I upload each video. Now let's go back to our code and what we have here is a very simple handler for this create product. And I have placed in the same file the create product command and the create product handler. And really it's a very typical handler that you would see on GitHub or on projects really a lot. And if we dig into it and try to understand exactly what are we doing here because we are taking quite some space here with our code. The business logic itself of the handler that the handler needs to perform is actually only this line. Obviously in a real application probably you would have two or three or four or five lines of business logic depending what it means in your application to create a product. However what I want to emphasize here is that the business logic actually takes the least amount of space from my method here. What we have here instead, we can break this down into different conceptual parts. So first of all, we do some logging. We want to log when the creation of a product starts and to log when it finishes. And then we also do what we would generally call model validation. And then we perform the business logic and then the return. And that's basically it. Now, the problem with this is that my handler, my handle method is cluttered with a lot of concerns that do not really belong to the application logic itself. So obviously we know about patterns and the idea of this decorator pattern and the question would naturally come what if we could simply just take out all the cross-cutting concerns like logging and model validation, place them somewhere else and then kind of like use them on the fly. And fortunately enough, here is where a very useful feature of Mediator comes in and this is the pipeline behaviors. That, that's how they are called in Mediator. As we'll see, basically they are very similar to what we know in middleware in ASP.NET Core from a behavior point of view, but we can use these pipeline behaviors to wrap basically around our handle methods and we can move all the cross-cutting concerns there. So let's take everything one by one and the first thing that we encounter here at and doesn't really belong in the handler is this logging part. So I'll go on and add here a new class and I will call this class logging behavior because that's what we want to put in this one. Obviously we need to make this class behave as a pipeline behavior in mediator and to achieve this we will need to kind of like have this as a generic where we have a t request and a t response and we need to implement this i pipeline behavior method. Now while implementing this method we'll have this task of handle and we see that we have the t request we have this request handler delegate of T response, which has the name next. So very similar to what we know in the middleware. And we have this cancellation token. What we'll also need here is a logger. So let's add the private field with the logger and the constructor. And let's resolve a logger from the DI container. So what we'll do here in this handle method, we just need to perform the logging that we did initially. So let's simply have this logger log information with the creating product. And then we want the handler to execute and return back to this pipeline behavior once the method was already executed or the handler has a response. So to achieve this very similar to what we have in regular middleware, we have this var result and we say that here it is a wait.next. Obviously we need to mark this as an async method. So once the delegated is executed and has a response and the execution comes back to this method, we just want to log this information that the product was created and then just return the result because this is the signature of the method. And basically that's it, we have created a pipeline behavior. Now one other thing that we need to do is to come back to our program.cs file and starting with mediator 12, we have this configuration object to configure mediator. But what we can do here is in, on this configuration object, for instance, call this configuration add open behavior and we specify the type of this logging behavior. Now in mediator, there are two types of pipeline behavior. There are those that are registered with open generics like this one. And these will be applied to really all the handlers that will be executed in our applications. And then there are also with closed generic registration and those will be only applied to a certain request and a certain handler, but not to all others. And we'll look into this just in a few minutes. 
However, what we can do now is get rid of this logging that we have here and also the logging that we have here. Then we have this next step that we have here, which is actually the command validation. And we want to also move this command validation to a dedicated pipeline behavior. So let's go on and create here a new class and we'll call this class common uh, create product validation behavior because we want to validate specific this create product command. And once again, to make this a pipeline behavior, we just need to make it generic that takes in a T request and then a T response. Then we have to import this I pipeline behavior. And then we can simply just implement this method here that comes by default from the interface. And it's exactly the same that we had previously. Now we've seen that we also we are also doing some logging here because if the validation fails, we want to log this. So we'll also end up here by injecting this logger. And coming back to our handle method, let's just remove this throw not implemented exception. And the first challenge that we might have here is because we take in this T request, but we don't know exactly what type, what concrete type actually this T request is. So what we need to do is we will know that we will register this validator or this behavior to be executed or to wrap specifically this create product command handler. Now that's why what we can do here is we can have this var create product and we can make this request as create product because we know we will register this only for this specific request and handler. And once we have that, we can simply add our logic that we had previously in our handler so if the create product price is less than or equal to zero we want to log some information and then we throw this argument exception and once again we should not forget we need to return this next delegate now we need also to add this pipeline behavior to our configuration and i will do it just here for instance Let's have this add behavior. And in this case, as is, this is adding a behavior that is closed generics. So it means that this pipeline behavior will be executed or will wrap only this specific pair of request and request handler. That's why we specify that this is a I pipeline behavior of create product and that returns a product. And we also specify that the behavior that we want to execute is this create product validation behavior, which takes in a create product and it returns a product. And this will be only applied to this specific handler. Now, why I wanted to put this here is that very similar to what we have in middleware, also, when we register pipeline behaviors in Mediator, it's actually very important the order in which we register them. And to quote what says on the wiki page of the Mediator library, you should add all the behaviors in the order that you would like to have them executed. However, there is a very weird behavior in my opinion, which I think it might be even a bug in this Mediator version 12. And that is for instance, that if you have this add behavior like the close behavior, and then you have several different open behaviors, what will happen is that the last open behavior will never trigger. And I really can't understand why. Now, the idea is that in order to work around this issue, what I would suggest probably doing is start to try maybe to add your open behaviors first and then these closed behaviors second. And now let me run the application and let's try this out also while monitoring what happens in the console. In the console. So first of all, I will provide here a value that passes the validation and we'll just click on execute and we see that we get the logging and obviously the validation, there was no failure. So we simply got through it. But for instance, if we change here and we put here zero, which will fail the validation and we run the application again, we see that we get the exception. Now, before we get the exception, obviously we get this creating product, which comes from the logging. And then we get the log that, that we have from the validation error and then we get the exception because we simply throw it. But before we wrap this up, I also want to notice that if you are using pipelines and in the pipeline, like for instance, this create product validation pipeline, you don't want to throw an exception. You want to go for the object or for the result pattern where you always return a result object to the caller then the working with behavior might be a little bit hacky. And let me show you why. Now, here I have also created this result, which is a result of T, which gets the payload and then is error. And then we have this error message. And I have added here a default constructor, but also another constructor that takes in the, uh, the, the, that takes in the error message. 
and you'll see in a second exactly why I did this. Now the problem is with this create validation is that we have this T response, but we don't really have a way to which we can know exactly that this T response is actually a result for which we actually need to set the is error to true and to also set the error message. So that's why we need to change this right now a little bit and we have a hacky way to actually achieve what we want to do using the activator and the create instance. Here what we do, we actually create this variable response and we want to cast it to a T response. And then we use the activator and we create an instance of this T response, which we know it should be a result object because we have defined and we know that everything returns this result. And then we have this price must be greater than zero, which is the error message. Now the only thing that we can do is obviously return this task from result because we need to return something. Now before we can test this out we need to go over to our create product and we need to do some changes here. Because right now it will not return a product but it will return a result of product. And then we have to do the same change here. So instead of product we turn, return the result and also here in the returning task. And now obviously we need to also get this result and create this new result of product and we set the payload if everything goes okay and we just return here the result back if everything is okay. The last thing that we need to do here is to also tweak everything in our behavior registration. And once again here, here we have ipipeline behavior of create product and then we return a result of product and here for the pipeline it's exactly the same thing. Now, if we go to the controller and let's play, place a breakpoint here because I want to show you that it actually works and let's debug the application. So I want to try this out, but we want to try this out in a way that it will fail the validation. So we leave everything on zero. And then we see that in our controller, instead of having an exception back, if we go to this result, we see that it's actually is error true and then we have this error message that we can simply return. So if we continue, we get this error response back. If you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button and like it. And if you are for the first time on this channel, hit the subscribe and the notification bell so that you are always notified when there's a new content here on this channel. If you have any questions, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave your comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.